Andrew Yang is warning against a Biden-Trump rematch in November, highlighting Donald Trump's consistent lead over President Joe Biden in the polls. Yang took to X to argue, guys, Joe Biden is going to lose to Trump and saying that doesn't mean I'm happy about it. Perhaps a nominee other than the historically unpopular 81-year-old incumbent who makes you nervous and is losing in the swing states? The 2020 Democratic presidential hopeful has endorsed long-shot Democratic candidate Dean Phillips, who got almost 20 percent of the vote in the New Hampshire primaries. Phillips is vowing to stay in the race, setting his sights on the next contest, South Carolina. But can he do it? Here to discuss Phillips, Biden, and all things presidential is Andrew Yang himself. Welcome back to Rising. Good to be talking to you again. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. So I'm curious. We've seen wages stagnant in the United States since the 70s. Despite you know j adjustments for inflation, we've still seen workers not receiving a fair share of the economy. They help grow. Things that they produce with their own two hands contribute you know, to the growth of GDP in the United States. And a big criticism I have of every candidate running right now is that that's not been a central part of the conversation. And I really think it needs to be. I think the American people would like that. I've always said the candidate that embraces that idea and produces you know, some kind of policy platform that will address it will be a front runner, will be able to overtake Joe Biden or Donald Trump. Is Dean Phillips a candidate that you think can do this? Can you speak to this at all? The main theme of Dean's campaign is that America has become unaffordable for Americans. And I completely agree with you that it has not worked out for the majority of working families over the last, unfortunately, number of decades. So what does Dean want to do about it? Dean wants universal health care. It's the number one cause of bankruptcy around the country. He wants to make vocational school and college tuition free. Education inflation obviously is shot up wants to give every American child a thousand dollar baby bond that'll grow over the 18 years to ten, fifteen thousand dollars you'd have a real leg up, wants to alleviate poverty through the enhanced child tax credit that uh, is my favorite thing we've done over the last couple of years, but of course we undid it because DC is so dysfunctional. Uh, Dean wants to bring Americans together to solve the problems that are making us all miserable and a lot of it is affordability and wage stagnation. I had a little bit of skepticism when I first saw Dean Phillips's launch for his campaign because he mentioned that Americans want someone else to run besides Trump and Biden. They don't want another Trump and Biden rematch. But he didn't even criticize Biden in that initial campaign announcement. He actually said that he was running to strengthen Joe Biden. And he's been a little bit more critical in the past few weeks in talking about the fact that Biden is facing a physical and communication related decline. But why is it that he it took him so long to speak more critically of the incumbent, especially since he is running against him? Uh, you know, what's fun is I've been through a version of this process where you're running for president and then you wind up sharpening uh, your focus and message in part because of attacks on you. <laughs> you know, so uh, what happened with Dean was he's a vice chair of uh, the the uh, Foreign Relations Committee uh, of the DNC, three-term member of Congress who flipped a purple, red-leaning district actually in Minnesota. Uh, and so he is one of the, frankly, rising stars of the Democratic Party. And, and he wanted to uh, strengthen the Democratic nominee nominees' chances in the fall, which I totally agree with, by the way, and you showed some of the data. Um, Joe Biden is on course to lose. And Dean Phillips said, you know, that's not where we should be going. Let's have someone in there who's 55 years old and can win. Um, but as he's been on the trail, of course, uh, he's wound up taking a bunch of attacks from the DNC that's been trying to suppress competition. And so uh, he's honed his own uh, message and platform. And that's completely natural. Keep in mind that this is a guy who tried to get other people to run uh, because he's not uh, uh, like an egomaniac or anything. He said, look, let's get in Gretchen Whitmer or Gavin Newsom, and only when everyone else declined did he step up for the good of the country. Uh, so it's very natural that his vision has gotten stronger over these last number of days and weeks on the trail. And I got to say, the guy's on fire now. Like, if you spend any time with Dean now, uh, you can see very, very clearly where he wants to take the country. 
I have a, a real problem with a lot of these candidates that are running along the party line and are afraid to move away on the issue of foreign affairs. It seems, you know, Dean Phillips has been kind of open about the Israel-Palestine issue, but a lot of young voters within the Democratic Party are not likely to show up for Joe Biden on Election Day because of how he has handled the Israel-Palestine uh, issue right now. Since October 7th and even before October 7th, we've seen the Muslim uh, vote decline in the polls a lot in terms of their support for Joe Biden. Do you think Dean Phillips is a candidate with a stance on Palestine that could win some of those voters back? Uh, Dean wants to make that very case, particularly to the Arab American community in Michigan. And as you say that there are a lot of folks who are not going to show up for Joe in November. It's one reason why I think Joe is going to lose to Trump. Joe is down by eight points in Michigan, which is a crucial swing state that he won in 2020. He's down by eight in Georgia. Uh, same story. Uh, Dean thinks we need new leadership from the West Bank to the West Wing to turn the page. He's for a two-state solution. Uh, he thinks that Netanyahu is not the right leader uh, in the region. I think that Dean's going to have license to do things uh, to help bring uh, some degree of stability and peace to that, that region uh, as a new face uh, in the Oval Office. Uh, and he has a distinct per per perspective as a Jewish American uh, leader himself. But I think that that's the, the kind of perspective it may take to bring both sides to the table and hammer out a two-state solution, which is what I believe is going to be necessary. So Dean got just under 20 percent in the New Hampshire primary. Of course, there are no delegates awarded there because of the DNC taking away that first primary state status away from New Hampshire. Um, first, can you talk a little bit about what you see as Dean's potential path to victory that's left, if there is one? And also, I'd love for you to comment on the way the DNC is running these primaries and if you feel that it's being done in a fair way. You know what percentage of Delegates have been assigned right now, zero, not a single one. Uh, and I don't like how the DNC stripped New Hampshire out of the delegates. I thought that was uh, uh, excessive. Uh, I despise how the DNC canceled their primaries in Florida and North Carolina. How can you talk about championing democracy on one hand and then suppressing it with the other? But here is Dean's path. February 3rd is South Carolina. That's Biden country, James Byron country. That's probably not gonna be Dean's night, honestly. <laughs> Though anything Dean does there is gonna be gravy. However, Michigan on February 27th is going to be a primary where independents can participate and independents in New Hampshire are piled into the Nikki Haley versus Trump showdown. I think that the Republican primary is resolved by February 27th and then independents will have a chance to back Dean in Michigan. That's going to be Dean's big opportunity, Feb 27 in Michigan. If Dean puts up a big number in Michigan, then all bets are off and everyone's going to take a look and say, wait a minute. We don't have to slump into the rematch of the 80 year olds that Biden is probably going to lose. We can actually get a 55 year old, robust, visionary new leader. Uh, and that's going to be the case that we make in Michigan from now until Feb 27. So a lot has changed about how electoral politics happen out on the field, on the campaign trail since 2020 when you ran. Can you paint the picture a little bit for us, what this looks like for Dean Phillips? Are voters really showing out who are Democrats who are on the fence between Joe Biden and maybe Dean Phillips? What's the scene like out in the field? What the scene is like out in the field is that no one knows who this guy is. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, he's like, he's brand new. He's been uh, on the trail for 11 weeks. Uh, and so there's a lot of introducing of Dean. When people get to see and meet Dean, uh, they come away blown away, super impressed. Uh, I would love for you all to have him on the program too um, so you can get a sense of it. But he is the man for the moment. He's the right leader. The challenge is just getting enough people to pay attention uh, and gauge him versus Biden as a choice for the Democratic nomination. If you actually take time and spend time with these two individuals, uh, you see that Dean is the right choice. The challenge is getting enough people in South Carolina and particularly Michigan familiar with him in a very, very compressed time frame. All right, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us. We'll continue to follow the Dean Phillips campaign here on Rising. Fantastic. He'd love, he'd love to come on. Yeah, you'd, you'd enjoy having him. He's a great guy. Sounds good.